science in pajamas. Yeah. All right, so today we're going to talk about disturbances in ecosystems. So what a disturbance is, it's damage or destruction to an ecosystem by some kind of force. Now there are two categories of disturbances. There's natural and man-made. Now natural is exactly what you would think it is. It could be things like tornadoes, volcanoes, flooding, hurricanes, earthquakes, and fire, like wildfire, so long as it's caused by lightning or something like that. Now, we consider all of these natural disturbances because each one of these will affect an ecosystem. The winds from a tornado can rip trees out of the ground. Volcanoes can completely destroy all the plants in, on the mountainside and thus destroy that ecosystem. Flooding can kill off organisms and damage the plants as well. Hurricanes, well, that includes flooding and tornadoes. So, or, well, flooding and winds to match a tornado. Earthquakes, because when the earth shakes and it could cause trees to fall over, lakes and rivers to actually drain if there's a split in the earth underneath it. Um, fire, lightning cause fire because that's going to burn down a forest and have other effects like that. So all of those create damage or destruction to an ecosystem. Sorry, I got Ripley in my lap and he's just so cute and cuddling and wants to, some loving. See, got a little tail here. Now man-made disturbances are exactly what they are. They're, what a disturbance is, damage or destruction to an ecosystem, but this time caused because of humans. So it can be um, the creation of settlements, agriculture, clear cutting a forest, Let's see, mining, building a dam, or, you know, fire, if the fire is caused by humans. And, or even, oh, I forgot a good one, pollution. Now, the reason why these are considered disturbances is because each one of these will damage or destroy an existing natural ecosystem. In, for instance, we'll talk about these top three all together. So when you clear cut a forest, you are cutting down the forest. So you are destroying that existing ecosystem. Now, whether you're doing it to build structures like houses or stores or whatever, or to clear the land for agriculture, you're still destroying that ecosystem. And even if there wasn't a forest there initially, even if it was a field or a grassland, you're still disrupting it by getting rid of the natural plants that live there and changing the soil or tilling, disturbing the soil, which will then disturb the organisms that live in the soil. And then you are, in the case of settlements, building upon that so that the original ecosystem cannot return to what it was. Or in the case of agriculture, you are planting seeds of plants and crops that may not be native to the area and you might be using pesticides um, to protect them which will then have effect on things such as insects or even birds, rodents, etc. If you are doing agriculture more so in terms of cow, pork, or chickens, then you st still have to clear the land, make it usable and habitable for the animals that you are bringing in. Plus you have to keep out predators such as wolves or mountain lions who are lacking on their food sources because of 
the um, destruction of the ecosystem. So their food sources ran away, and now all that's left is the animals you brought in. Mining um, can have any number of effects, like we m mentioned in a previous video. Mountain top removal actually destroys the entire top half of a mountain, so that can cause the or massive changes to that ecosystem because, well, you just kind of blew up that ecosystem. <clears throat> we also mentioned with the dam how it can affect it. You build a dam, let's say it was originally a river, not necessarily a big river, just a regular river, and that's going to have its own particular ecosystem. Now, when you build a dam, and on one side, that's going to build or collect the water into a lake. So that means that the aquatic ecosystem is going to expand and take over some of the terrestrial or land-based ecosystem, which is going to disturb the land ecosystem. Yes, hi, Ruby. And then on the other side of the dam, the river's no longer flowing, which means that aquatic ecosystem from the river is going to be completely destroyed. The fish and aquatic organisms are going to die out. And then the land ecosystems on that side of the dam can actually expand into there. So it is going to change up the ecosystems. Fire, same way it affected fire or how same way fire affects ecosystems that we talked about on this side, but in this case we're talking about, let's say, sparks from a campfire. So the fire wouldn't have occurred in that area naturally. It's not normal, but it still did, and that can have massive effects on that ecosystem. And pollution. Let's use the example of water pollution. So a lot of excess plastics in the ocean are killing a lot of organisms such as sea turtles. Well, sea turtles are, an, they have an important niche in their ecosystem. And if the sea turtles are dying because they're choking on the plastic, then that's going to affect other populations that are reliant on the sea turtles, whether as a food source or as a predator, because predators are important. They keep prey populations in check. So by having that excess pollution, you are changing up the um, the rows of the different organisms and you are affecting the ecosystem that way. Also, you can look at it in terms of the air pollution and how the excess carbon dioxide is actually being absorbed into the ocean, which is causing the temperature of the oceans to rise as well as causing acidity levels to rise. Now what this can do and what it's already started doing is killing off coral. And that has an effect because coral is a major part of most aquatic ecosystems because they feed a lot of the coastal areas and a lot of the fishes there that will then go out and into the um, open ocean and can get eaten by predators out there. So we do tend to see this chain reaction. There's a lot of concern over if all the coral dies, what will happen to the entire ocean ecosystem. There's a lot of thought that it could just straight up collapse. So there's that. You are such long fur. Sorry. And so those are the two classifications of disturbances. Now, when we talk about disturbances, we also want to talk about the stability of an ecosystem. All right. So when we what we mean by stability is how I guess strong of an ecosystem it is. So when we talk about the stability of an ecosystem, what we mean is we know disturbances will affect an ecosystem. But is the ecosystem stable enough that it can actually recover at a faster rate? So a more stable ecosystem will recover faster and return to its original state as opposed to a less stable ecosystem, which will take longer to return to a stable state, 
or be irreversibly changed into some other kind of ecosystem. Maybe if it was completely destroyed. So <clears throat> how this occurs is generally because of the organisms within that ecosystem, and I'm talking about all of them, plants, animals, etc. They either adapt to the changes that have occurred and can now survive and thrive in those that changed environment, or the ecosystem can somehow reverse the damage that was done and fix itself. <clears throat> when we talk about stability, we talk about two factors, and that is resilience. Resilience and resistance. Now, both of these play a key part in determining the stability of an ecosystem. Resilience is the ability of the ecosystem to recover. So after some kind of disturbance has occurred, let's use the example of a wildfire. After a fire has occurred, the resilience would look at the ability of the ecosystem to repair itself. So can it recover? Can the plants grow back? Can the animals return to it? So that's looking at resilience. How can it recover? Can, well, first of all, can it recover at all? If so, can it recover quickly? What's the rate of recovery? And resistance is looking at whether or not, or I guess I should say how much damage is caused to it. So it's the ability of the ecosystem to resist change. Oh my goodness, little boy. There you go. I keep trying to roll over. So it's the ability the ability of the ecosystem to resist change. So when the fire comes through, how much of it will actually be burned up? Maybe some of the organisms like the trees have adapted to survive through the fire. So their bark might get burnt, but the tree itself survives. So it can, it resisted the dam a lot of the permanent damage of the fire and that allows it to help restore the ecosystem faster. So again, the stability of an ecosystem looks at these two factors, resilience, which is the ability to recover after the disturbance, and resistance, the ability to resist changing due to an, a disturbance. So this is looking kind of more before and after. How much does it change because of the resist or of the disturbance? How quickly can it fix itself because of the or after the disturbance? So I hope that helps you guys. Um, we'll have one more video for this chapter, which is looking at ecological succession. But in the meantime, you guys just stay awesome, stay amazing, and I will talk to you later. All right, have bye, guys.